This is a segment you all need to pay attention to. Stop what you're doing. Please share this because it's happening under Americans' eyes right now, and your tax dollars are going to operate one of the largest child trafficking operations in the world. Child sex trafficking, child slavery in the United States is a multi-billion dollar industry, and the government is facilitating it. I know it might be hard to swallow, but we have multiple whistleblowers here on the show exposing this, and we have one today. Deborah White is a former HHS whistleblower who watched this all unfold and learned how this operation is happening to this day. And Deborah, we'd love to welcome you to Redacted. Thank you so much for your bravery and shining a light on this horrific story. Thank you so much, Clayton. I appreciate you having me on, just providing a platform, uh, just to let the American people know exactly what's going on in the government. So thank you. So absolutely. So this is happening right now. Before we get into your story, how bad is it? Americans are sitting there going to their jobs, they're taking care of their families, putting food on the table. And I think most Americans can almost kind of compartmentalize this story. Like this can't possibly be happening in the United States. Is it happening and how bad is it? Yeah, Clayton, um, I was one of those Americans. Um, when I signed up to go and help Health and Human Services, uh, Office of Refugee Resettlement Program under the Administration for Children and Families, I had no idea. I had no idea. I mean, sure, I, I you know, I'm, I'm not totally ignorant that, you know, bad people exist and they exploit, you know, systems, things like that. Uh, but I would have never in my wildest dreams imagined that when I signed up to go help reunite children with their families, what I would actually uncover at the site that I was at. Um, it's, it's bad. It's rampant. Um, so from my perspective, um, almost every single case that I was dealing with was a case of trafficking at the site. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but that's because the, the cases that were coming to me were actually the trouble cases. So because it's, I guess to answer the question, uh, it's really bad. It's really rampant. Um, I was at one of maybe 15 sites that were operating um, in the summer of 2021 um, because of the influx of children that are coming across the border. And the reason there's such an influx is because, you know, there's an entire trafficking network, you know, that happens, um, you know, in country. A majority of the kids that we were seeing were from Guatemala. Um, and those children, uh, the vast majority of them were being trafficked, labor trafficked into the country, um, other worse forms of trafficking as well, you know, sex trafficking. Um, but many of the cases that, that I came across were definitely labor trafficking. Children knew that they were coming to the United States to work, to pay back the debt that they owed to the cartel and, um, you know, send money home. But this is the story that the traffickers paint for the, the, the picture they paint for these children, that they're going to have, you know, this wonderful life and this, these opportunities that are just wonderful in the United States. And then when they come here, they don't realize they're actually slaves and they're actually um, forced to stay and work seven days a week, you know, at different locations. Uh, and so, um, again, to just try to recap the question. Um, it's rampant. Um, it's happening across multiple sites. We were in touch with sites, you know, in Pecos, Texas, Fort Bliss, Texas. I was in uh, Pomona, California. That was the site that I was assigned to for four months. Uh, and so um, as I queried the system <clears throat> and uh, the government system of record, you know, which is the, the UAC portal, uh, I found that, you know, this particular, in a particular case, you know, that we found, um, the first case I found on the site, which was uh, two children that were going to Bonita Springs, Florida, that the, the actual uh, household member had about 16 other children. So I brought it to the attention of the administration uh, there on site, you know, and, uh, you know, they acted like 16 other yes. children. Six, yes. I mean, an absolute red, red flag. These are not his children, not his children, not his children. So once they figured out that I, I figured this out, um, you know, they said, hey, well, how did you how did you do this? How did you locate this? I mean, um, the, the leadership there acted like they were extremely shocked as if they'd never seen trafficking through their program, you know. And so uh, I, I showed them, I said, here's how I queried the system. Here's how I figured out uh, this household member is actually attached to these, you know, six different properties that have um, multiple children at each of these sites. And I noticed that some of the children that had aged out, maybe he had recruited those children, you know, two, three, four years ago, those now adults were recruiting children as well. So now they were now sponsors. And so it's like a network. So once these kids age out, they start then recruiting uh, children from Guatemala and keeping them under their care. So, 
So for the for the ignorant, myself included, on how this process works, this individual who has 16 children and now these kids who become adults and they start networking these children, I mean, they're brainwashed, right? So they're part of this process. Yeah. They're sort of brainwashed and uh, almost like Stockholm syndrome. And they're, they're recruiting children then coming up from Guatemala. They're pretending to be relatives, right? They're pretending to be an uncle, yes. uh, a grandfather, et cetera. And they're, they're funneling these children in the United States through a systemic program. Yes. And the, the United States is involved in this program. I mean, they're not just sitting back sort of facilitating just watching this happen. They're actively involved in this sort of Guatemala-Honduras process right into the United States, correct? Yeah, I mean, they're providing the they're providing the door. The door is wide open. You know, these kids know, the, uh, the traffickers know, and then the kids then know, you know, the process is, you know, hey, we'll get you up to the border. You know, you just run over there and, you know, Border Patrol is going to have to let you in. Uh, and then the government will take it from there and they'll make sure that you get to that address that we gave you. And so they provide. So they're facilit the facility, the transportation, they're even giving them airline flights. In fact, this morning, as you and I are speaking, it's been reported, according to um, according to multiple sources, that the TSA has created separate lines at the airport so that Americans who have when we go to the airport, we have to show ID to get through to get on a plane. Right. We even have to take off our shoes for crying out loud. We have to take laptops out of our bags. The TSA has now created a separate line at the airport for illegal immigrants where they don't have to show identification and they're being ferried across the United States, government funded by the Biden administration and transported to houses. They don't have to show identification. Plus, they're giving they're giving them multiple thousands of dollars per month in a stipend in order to live. Yes. And this is happening. This is happening. This is happening. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, the the IDs of the sponsors we don't even know that they're valid. And you know why? We never actually see the sponsor face to face. We have the ability, we can do video calls. All of the case managers have phones that have the ability to do video call. As a matter of fact, the entire process is done through WhatsApp. So the sponsor sends identification, you know, quote unquote identification that's theirs. But again, you never know because you've never seen their face. The same sponsor could be sending you identification for 15 different people and you would never know it. You would never know that it's the same person because again, they're doing it at different sites. They know the process. They do it at different sites, um, different case managers, you know, requesting kids from across the country. It's not just one place. And the government ID that they're giving you is typically a Guatemalan or Honduran issued ID. And it can be expired up to two years. The instructions that we received were to accept any ID given to you, even expired two years. And these are not US IDs. These are IDs from in country and they're a lot of them were expired. And in some cases, you know, they were giving us copies of an ID like it wasn't even the actual ID. You would have to accept a copy of the ID. What did what did they say? What, what did HHS say when you alerted them? to the child trafficking that was funneling right through this, your office. Yeah. So, I mean, initially the, the leadership there said, oh, you know, we're shocked. Oh my gosh, what's going on? You know, um, I mean, they acted like they'd never seen it, like they'd never seen trafficking through their program. And we know that they've right. been doing this for years and years. We know that there have been congressional hearings in 2015 and 2018 uh, that have, you know, called out HHS ORR program, Office of Refugee Resettlement Program to say, What's going on? We know that you're trafficking, you know, in 20, I think it was in 2015 or 2018, 2015, I believe they found kids, you know, in Marion, Ohio, you know, that were living on egg farms. So they know, they absolutely know that trafficking goes on through their program, but there's no training whatsoever to, to, to tell you how and to where are these? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, right. so there's nothing there to, 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 to red flag this and to run it up. There's no protocols in place and there's no sort of follow up. You received a letter saying, hey, thanks. Thanks for alerting us. And that's it. Right. And it's continued and it's gotten worse right. since yeah, then, right? It has because um, when trafficking was identified, at least that, that first case, you know, and cases afterwards, because we had multiple dozens, uh, when, once it was identified, you know, um, the child was then, you know, transferred to another facility, you know, this particular boy, Antonio, um, that I remember, I mean, I, I, I pray for him at night. Uh, you know, he went to another facility, but then they eventually released him. So what happens is it basically they act like they're saving the kid, like they're sending them to a different facility that they say that can handle, you know, more long term care. But then when you call to find out, you know, what's going on with that kid, you find out that he was released anyways. So he was sent to the location that he wasn't supposed to go to. Uh, and then once the administration there found out that we were making phone calls and, you know, checking up on the child that had been transferred to another facility, 
Uh, they then told us, they said, we appreciate that you care about the children, but you are not to make phone calls to any other facilities to try to find out what's going on. You just need to process the what? children that are your cases in front of you, and you need to stop worrying about that. And the other thing is, when we knew there were fraudulent birth certificates, we would call the consulate to try to figure out, um, you know, hey, is this a valid birth certificate or not? We got scolded by the, by the leadership administration. They came in and said, that is not your job. They said, you are not here to investigate the sponsor. You are here to reunite the children with their sponsor, and that is your job. You are not to investigate the sponsor. They said, that's our responsibility, and we will notify the consulate if we believe that there's fraudulent birth certificates being passed through the site. Do you know of any in incidents where someone has flagged a fraudulent birth certificate and someone was prosecuted and or arrested? No. No, not at all. So they're doing a great job. Right. So you're, you're looking into it. You're noticing that this is fraudulent. Yes. You're calling up to find out the welf welfare and safety of these children and you're scolded. Yes. Don't ask questions. No. Your job is done. That's right. That's right. The goal there for, was us to process the children with 10 to, within 10 to 14 days. And if we couldn't get it done in 10 to 14 days, then they would take the case from us and they would give it to a person that was on the strike team. The strike team, those would typically happen on Saturdays and Sundays when the case managers may not be on site. And um, then they would process the children. So the strike team member would then make sure that they got the, ch the child out of there within 24 to 48 hours because we were taking too long with the cases. So these children, they're in the United States, they're working at egg farms and chicken farms and strawberry farms, and they're being, it seems like th this labor is an incredible demand. That's why it's such a multi-billion dollar a year industry. It seems like the Biden administration wants to keep these borders open and flowing because this labor is so incredibly important to these companies and these businesses. They're all friends of the Biden administration. They're big donors to the Democratic Party, et cetera, and frankly, to the Republican Party. That's why uh, under multiple administrations, nothing seems to happen here, that these borders are wide open and these children are being put into slavery positions in the United States so that cheap labor can flourish. Am I wrong? That's absolutely correct. It's modern day slavery. These children are enslaved and they're in factories, you know, they're, um, you know, there's one case in Virginia, you know, I think it was a, a, a Tyson, I don't want to say the wrong company, but it was a chicken farm um, and the child had his, his arm severed off, you know, from, from the um, shoulder down, severed off in a machine. Thankfully, he was medevaced. You know, and they asked, you know, how old is this worker, you know, and everyone was really, you know, shocked. I think this was uh, the New York Times that did a piece on this. And, um, you know, they had to say, hey, he, he was 15 or 16 years old and, you know, but nothing happens. I mean, the plants continue to operate with children. You know, it's it's just a travesty, right. but right. there is a demand and that's why mm -hmm. it keeps happening. And that's why they don't shut the border down, because if you if you shut down the border, there's no more border problem, but they, they won't. They continue to allow it to happen, even though they know that there is modern day slavery happening, you know, right, right through America. Well, source, sources have told me that, you know, ice, they know when ice is going to show up on a particular day at a chicken farm in Atlanta or Georgia or somewhere mm -hmm. else. And uh, uh, individuals are rounded up and, you know, and then they look the other way and then new individuals arrive the very next day that this is part of the process. It's sort of the look over the shoulder. This is part of the process. So uh, until we get some major change in government throwing out these deep state creeps who are allowing this to flourish, this is not going to change 100%. because absolutely wow, really, really troubling. Um, well, I could talk more deeply about this, but I, I just wanted to give sort of an overview for our audience and we can dive more deeply at a later date, Deborah. But sure. thank you for your bravery, bringing this to the attention of the American people. What can people do? People who are watching right now, who have compartmentalized this type of story and, and are moving on with their lives, what can American people do? You're, you're out there trying to draw attention to this. What can we do to stop this? Yeah, um, that's a great question, Clayton. Um, and it's one that we've been working on as a team. There's five of us whistleblowers that work together, um, you know, that have seen it from different perspectives. You know, we have one DHS whistleblower who has seen, you know, gang members, you know, um, MS-13 uh, requesting children. You know, we uh, have one uh, whistleblower, you know, that we know worked the transportation side of it who has witnessed children, you know, um, um, babies in Texas at a Walmart, like thousands of babies under a year old at facilities. And so th the magnitude of this travesty, I mean, I cannot even describe how 
horrendous it is and how horrendous it is for the children that have to live it because they don't realize what they're getting into. They don't realize they're coming here to be slaves. They do not know that. And uh, I mean, it's just abhorrent what's happening. But um, the American people, you know, um, you know, can say, hey, you know, we know about these whistleblowers who have come forward. You know, you can mention us by name. You know, many um, congressional staffers, you know, know us. We're working with congressional staffers now. Uh, Senator Grassley's office uh, is doing a an amazing job of addressing, you know, this issue. Um, just recently, I think it was this past Monday, uh, the Washington Examiner dropped a, a piece about. Um, Senator Grassley's office actually sending a memo out to Health and Human Services Office of Refugee Resettlement um, and with 38 other senators, so 39 senators in total, sent this letter stating that, you know, HHS cannot uh, do a rule change that they're trying to do right now that would make it easier to traffic the children by not requesting, uh, you know, certain identification processes, paperwork by making sure that HHS employees cannot um, report outside of Health and Human Services uh, without their express permission. And so Senator Grassley's office has uh, sent a memo to ensure that that rule change that was in the Federal Register uh, can cannot be made into law because what HHS ORR program was trying to do is bypass, you know, the congressional process and do an administrative change uh, through the Federal Register. And so we did a campaign and got about 66,000 signatures from the American people to ensure that this rule change would not go into effect. So um, contact your contact your senator's office. Mention us by name: Deborah White, Tara Rodas, um, Carlos Ariano, and um, Aaron Stevenson, uh, and Myra Moreno. That's the five of us who are um, you know doing podcasts you know a couple nights a week, just trying to get the word out. Um, so please contact your your senators and let them know that you know you won't stand for this and you will not stand by and just have uh, your taxpayer dollars go towards government sponsored uh, trafficking. Yeah, please share this interview. Take this YouTube clip, this Rumble clip, and just share it with your member of Congress and tell them to watch this right now. So, Deborah, we thank you for your bravery in this. We thank you for everything you're doing to get the word out about this and all the work and messaging. I know it's an uphill battle, especially when you've got big tech censorship that's really suppressing this story as much as they can. They don't like it. Um, we saw that with the movie uh, The Sound of Freedom. Uh, we saw the suppression about this story. They make a lot of money off of child trafficking and they do not want us exposing it. Deborah, thank you for your work on this. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.